Sylvia Plath once wrote, In March, I'll be rested, caught up, and human. It's the last day of March, and I'm doubling down on this affirmation. With a big reset, spring cleaning, and this includes my bookshelves and my physical TBR. There are some books on here that have been on my shelf for a while, and they've kind of lost momentum in my interest to actually read them. It's not that I don't want to read them or that I think I won't like them, there's just been others that I've prioritized over them and I fear that there are some that I may never read if I don't commit to them. So for my April TBR, I will start at the very bottom of my physical TBR list. And to push things a little bit further, I'm actually making a 2024 to read or to donate list of books. So if I don't read them by the end of this year, I'll have to give them away to someone who will. So we will start with that 2024 list of books, and then we will make a shorter TBR list for April to get a head start. Because I don't actually want to get rid of these books, if there is a chance I might actually enjoy them. And I just like having them around, but books are supposed to be read, so I'm doing this. So I have three somewhat equal stacks here, a pile for young adult books, literary fiction, and a non-fiction pile. There are 17 books on here in total, which is a bit of a risky number for me because I usually read about 50 books a year, and we've already passed three months, and I'm 14 books in, so I'm a little worried I'm not going to read all of them, but I guess that's kind of the point. It may also just be a really great motivation for me to read. Maybe I just need that fear. Um, either way, I think this will be a great exercise. So let's start with YA. As some of you know, I read quite a bit of YA, and especially so when I started getting back into reading. They were really the books that got me out of my reading slump, and still now when I feel a little less into reading, it's what I gravitate towards. But we do have quite a few on here that have been sitting around for a little too long without me paying attention to them. There are two that were never really high on my priority list to begin with. I picked them up secondhand because they seemed like a nice read. We have All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven and Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. They actually have very similar premises of will love conquer all type of thing in heart-wrenching coming-of-age stories about love. They've just never been a true priority on my TBR list, so these are definitely in danger of never getting read. But then there are two that were high priorities, Legendborn and Scythe. I think both quite well-known young adult fantasy books. Legendborn revolving around demon hunters, while in Scythe we follow apprentice Scythes, the only ones who can take lives in this dystopian world. I vividly remember buying these and feeling so excited and I don't know what happened then. I've put them on some monthly TBR lists, but I feel like I never even got close to reading them. So they are both on the long list of to read or to donate, but at least one of them will be on my April TBR, I think, too. I also think I need to put Loveless by Alice Oseman on here. Um, like everyone else, I was gushing over Heartstopper at some point, and then I read Radio Silence, which was good, but perhaps not as amazing as I expected it to be. So then I kind of put Loveless on the back burner. So I think I need a little encouragement to put this one back on my TBR list, and, um, but I think I'll actually like it, and it's similar to the author author's other novels about themes of self-acceptance, come of age, and identity. Now let's move on to literary fiction. The first book on here is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, who also wrote Convenience Store Woman. It's one of those books that I feel like I need to be in a certain mood, but I'm not sure if I will ever be in the Earthlings mood because everyone keeps saying how weird it is, so I think I just need to sit down and read it. I also have Yoke on here by Mary H.K. Choi. Contemporary fiction about two estranged sisters reconnecting due to the illness of one of them. It seems like a heavy one, and maybe that's why I haven't read it, but I still really want to. 
Talking about heavy reads, I also have The People in the Trees, which is written by Hanya Yana Gihara, who also wrote A Little Life. And well, after reading that, I didn't exactly feel excited to read her other books, but I've heard that this one is quite different. It's ex- historical fiction, but also magical realism about an anthropologist who goes to a Micronesian island in search of a lost tribe, but then comes across a group of forest dwellers who appear to have found a way to live a very long time, um, but of course it comes at a cost. We also have The Architect's Apprentice by Elif Shafak. It's historical fiction, which I think is why it's stuck on my shelf. I always think I won't enjoy historical fiction, even though I've been proven wrong many times. This one is set in 16th century Istanbul and is said to be a memorable story of of artistic freedom, creativity, and the clash between science and fundamentalism. It sounds super fascinating, I just need to actually pick it up. Then we have Zadie Smith's N.W. Zadie Smith is one of those authors I hear so much about but have never read, and so when I spotted his book at a second-hand sale, I just kind of impulse bought it. It's not one of her most famous works, but it kind of sounded interesting. It seems like it's kind of a slice of life in London. Next, we have A Burning, which I've mentioned in a couple of recent TBRs, and quite frankly, I don't understand why I'm not picking it up. It seems to be right up my alley. I'm not going to talk about it again, I'm just going to commit to it, and hopefully you'll hear about it in a wrap-up very soon. The last one on this pile is Winter in Sokcho. I've put this book on every possible TBR, but I just haven't read it still, so if I don't read it by the end of this year, I think it's fair to say that I won't read it at all. It's really short though, so I feel like I should be able to cram it in there sometime this year. The last pile is non-fiction. I don't read or buy a ton of non-fiction, um, so this is almost my entire physical non-fiction TBR. One book on here is quite well known, No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, which received quite some attention here on booktube a number of years ago, which is also why I picked it up, but I have to admit I have lost interest completely, so I really want to commit to reading it by the end of this year. The others perhaps a little less or a lot less widely known. First off, we have King Leopold's Ghost by Adam Hochschild, which is about colonialism, in particular about the Congo. Then we have Voodoo Histories by David Aronovich about the role of conspiracy theories in modern history. And then two very niche books <laughs> due to my line of work, which are Hunting Seasons by James Harkin and Trauma and Recovery by Judith Lewis Herman both of which are about political terror. Maybe not quite everyone's cup of tea, but on my shelf nonetheless. And I do have one poetry collection here as well, the only unread poetry collection I have on my shelf, which is Bluets by Maggie Nielsen, which is described as a lyrical, philosophical, and often explicit exploration about personal suffering and the limitations of vision and love as refracted through the color blue. So that is a list of books I have to read or donate by the end of 2024. I'll give them their own dedicated spot in my apartment, making it obvious that they need to be read or they need to go. This may turn out to be a very effective reading strategy for me, we will see to what lengths I will go to to keep these books in my possession. Now to narrow it down to 5 for my April TBR. I want to try to read two literary fiction books. I'm going to go with A Burning, because it's been on my shelf the longest of all of these, and I think I will actually really, really enjoy it. And I'm going to go with Earthlings, because there will never be a right time to read Earthlings, so I might as well make it the time now. Then I'll do two YA books, one fantasy, one non-fantasy. I'm going to go with Scythe because of this list of books, I think it's the one that I'm most excited about and I want to make sure this doesn't become a reading slump month. And I'll also pick Everything Everything. 
I'm not sure why, but it's it's the pick. I know I'll only be able to read one nonfiction, especially considering the topic, so that works out well. And I think I will go with voodoo histories. Not because I think I will like it the most out of this list, but I'm feeling this topic most and it's the biggest one on it, so I feel like I'll feel good about getting this one added away as well. Okay, so those are the books I plan to read in April. Let me know in the comments if you have books that you've had on your shelf for ages and want to commit to reading. Let me be your accountability buddy. Or just let me know what you plan to read in April. I always love hearing what you all are reading. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.